Hello and welcome to the National Oceanography Centre's Into the Blue podcast. I'm your host Will and today I'm joined by Hugh Gullick for part two of an innovation special where we'll talk all about the Innovation Centre. So if you haven't listened to part one, uh, pause this, head over to part one, um, either on your preferred podcast app or on our YouTube channel, uh, and we'll also put part one in our description. So welcome back, Hugh. Thank you. Um, so I mentioned the Innovation Centre. So recently, the seventh anniversary of yeah. the opening of the Innovation Centre has just passed. Yeah. Um, should we go back seven years and just talk about sort of why the Innovation Centre was, was put together and why it was open and why we felt like it was good to sort of get something physical open uh, at knock yeah no it, it's 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 a it's a good um good good place to start so yeah if, if you go back seven years ago um you know a lot of the technology that we were developing um you know ultimately needed input from from industry um, and, and we always knew that as we were developing it when we buy certain parts sensors etc cetera, etc cetera. um and and the, around that time marine autonomous equipment and things was 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 nowhere near uh, as popular for want of a better term as and, and widely used as it is now and and the innovation center for us was a really good way for us to engage with a range of other organizations to help us with our technology development but also impart our experience our learning on on their organizations so it, it was it was set up with the help of a, a, a government grant to help set it up we provisioned some physical space got this lovely workshop and 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 really started to work with members who joined the innovation center on specific technology development uh, projects uh, of which they got benefit from and as which we got benefit from so it was that kind of meeting ground for want of a better term for organizations in, involved in autonomous engineering and and for our autonomous engineers as well to, to come together and develop technology so that you know that was the that was the thought process yeah and of course you know government backing um, and a grant to help set that up was was necessary yeah. quite frankly yeah, yeah. so but we're obviously in the innovation center now so yeah. we're in we're in one of the hangars for, yeah. for autonomous underwater vehicles so boat, boat face um fast forward seven years to now so if someone was to come to the innovation center what yeah. what would they see what what would they see going on what was sort of a day look like in the innovation center yeah sure so um we've got a full-time manager and um a, a, and a coordinator who effectively manage the um the, the day-to-day operations of the innovation center and then forward plan for events and things like that but if you were to arrive at the door, uh, what you can't see, um, for those of you that are watching on YouTube, is we have a, a big open plan office where a lot of our engineering team work from, and we have hot desks there that members can can use. Yeah. Dedicated meeting rooms uh, as well, and a, and a large kind of training suite operations room as, as well. So all of that is 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 supplements the, the physical workshops, of one of which, as you say, we're in now. Um, so they have physical space. They've got meeting rooms to use. Um, they can take dedicated office space just opposite where we're sitting now as yeah. well if they grow and they want more than one, one person here. So they're fully embedded in uh, the engineering team at the NOC. So they're sit literally sitting side by side with them. So there is that physical connection, the water cooler kind yeah. of moment. Yeah. Um, so we have that and then we have the we have the workshops as well. So I mean, these are fairly traditional um, I guess development engineering workshops. You know, they're not production manufacturing lines. Yeah. They are they're designed and set up for doing R and D, prototyping, testing, calibration. Yeah. All of that exists in in one one space um, in, in in the NOC. So they have access to that. And of course, the access is you know, for projects they're working on with us but also for maybe some products that they've already got that they need to test, they can do that in the test tank, you know, just, right. just down the corridor. Um, so we've got physical inf infrastructure and space. The other element that we, we have as well, of course, is with the innovation center manager um, and, and the coordinator, between them, they, they help support uh, uh, bids for research funding so they'll help right. members they'll they'll line them up with the right people at the NOC to help that collaboration and help them apply for specific funding and also they they have a full kind of events program so we run you know monthly webinars we have donut Fridays <laughs> uh, we have um, sort of evening events where we'll try and get lots of members and outside uh, organizations together to, to meet so 
they're very much driving the um the kind of day-to-day management but also this future agenda of bringing bringing like-minded people and organizations right. together right. donut friday sounds good donut friday is very <laughs> very popular so yeah. rewinding a bit obviously you mentioned members yeah um so obviously partnerships is quite an integral part of the innovation center it and knock innovations as a whole yeah um how, how do the members sort of interact interact with the innovation center so can they come and work here and and, and do that and you i said they can use the space but yeah. um what how would the membership look sort of with partner between not between us and them it, it, it's a great question because it's changed <laughs> in the last two years yeah. for obvious reasons yeah. with covid so um so the the traditional way is they they would come and work here they'd use a hot desk or they would they would use a, a specific office yeah. and um they'd conduct their normal day-to-day business yeah. and then where they're working on projects with us they would effectively be part of the, the team right um clearly that changed with with covid so we still we still have that now but you know the world has kind of moved on a little bit so we've had to cater for that so we we do have what we call like a virtual membership right so um for those people that either you know d- d- don't want to come in or or can't come in or are perhaps located in a different country they can be virtual members where they'll get newsletters they can come to all the webinars you know and anything that you don't physically have to be picking up equipment yeah. and, and things like that so we do offer we do offer both um and, and we've got we've got a good good take up you know both ends of that sort of spectrum and yeah. and, and in the middle as well so that's typically how the kind of partnership and the day-to-day work um happens and 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 again it's a range of different types of organizations yeah. Yeah. As, as well so what, what kind of industries would they, would they come from is it is it a wide range or is it something that you know a lot of them are from a similar industry or, or is it sort of a, a wide variety it, it it's it is quite wide however what i would say is that you know it it's labeled as the you know marine autonomy yeah, and robotics yeah. Te- uh, um, innovation center so it has that yeah. autonomy uh, and engineering slant so yeah if you looked at our membership that is the common link now the uses of the technology they vary so right. you've got some um, who are interested in autonomous technology and perhaps they're looking at designing really small um, uh, you know autonomous uh, systems you've got others who are looking at perhaps designing you know six seven meter length ones so the applications are very different but at the core of it is ultimately the autonomous engineering right. um, skills types of companies real mix we've got you know smes startups right through to large multinationals um who are members as well yeah. so everything in between yeah, yeah. Real mix. is there an equal mix between sort of the local sides obviously we're in southampton but is it a lot is, is it a lot of sort of an equal mix between local uk and then some obviously worldwide would be more virtual but yes yeah yeah so i would say i mean if i had to put percentage terms on it pr- probably 50 percent solent south coast yeah. um and then the rest are mostly uk and a, and a smattering of yeah. north america yeah. and mainland europe yeah so would you say in terms of in terms of sort of its role in the industry would you say it's a really good thing to have something physical and have you know a place where people can come and collaborate um you know between businesses share ideas and stuff like that is it yeah. for, the, for the industry is it you know obviously it's a positive thing but what sort of how far does that go is it a real yeah. sort of key it, player in it or it's i mean i'm going to say yes, yes. Right? obviously <laughs> but, but uh, you know let me let me kind of give you the, the logic of why that is you know there's, there's there's two main things that we've we've got here that are take years to develop if you're a small business or, or, or loads of money and you know there's nothing wrong or right about that it's just just a fact you know what we've got here in our own capability is over 50 or ne- sorry nearly 50 R&D dedicated engineers so you know for an organization to get 50 dedicated yeah. autonomous engineers you know that's a huge cost if you can yeah. find them right so we've yeah. got that here so the innovation center acts as a gateway to access and work directly with that expertise without having to you know effectively buy it or find it yourself right. as an organization and the second thing is you're absolutely right is is physical infrastructure and space and you know let's be realistic about this workshops like this and what we've got here they don't come cheap right, right. so you know if you're a if you're a startup where cash flow is absolutely important you're just not you know it's a big decision right to go and invest huge sums yeah. of money in something like this so so we offer this to members um because we recognize that they don't all have this 
this you know uh, their own premises like yeah. this so that access to ex our expertise the access to these facilities you know absolutely crucial for really kind of providing an ecosystem for specifically you know, marine yeah. autonomous systems development and, and innovation that you know i'm sure it exists for other sectors but I, i've not seen things like this um in the uk specifically around autonomous yeah, so systems it really is at the forefront then oh for it's, sure it, yeah I, I mean the, the the stuff that the stuff that we develop the stuff that you know partners develop it, it's pushing the boundaries of of what you know w what is what is possible and 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 we've continued to do that and lots of our members have been contributed to that and helped us do that and they do it themselves so yeah. you know what a fantastic kind of ecosystem yeah. to be part yeah, of yeah it's amazing to see all this tech you know all it's in great. one place and seeing everyone work on it and seeing it all come together and then yeah. knowing what you know the outcomes are exactly it's really good so exactly. you meant you mentioned events so recently sort of as a time of filming recently we've had the marine autonomy and technology showcase yeah. um which isn't is a knock event um, yep. that we run and obviously a lot of the partners are involved in that yeah can you can you give us sort of a lowdown on what that event is and it's sort of its significance in the industry and its significance to, to marine autonomy as a whole yeah no I, I, absolutely so uh, you know innovation center seven years old i think you're going to correct me because you know better than i do <laughs> but matt's was this the seventh or eighth one i can never remember uh i can't remember I, anyway seventh or eighth yeah. one so they they kind of grew up hand in hand and and matt's is all about bringing the sector together for three days of a mix between a traditional trade show and a dedicated technical conference but it's all based on marine autonomous systems and and, and related fields um so that's grown uh, i think well this year we had it was really well attended this year a, a, a huge amount of people all held here on site just out, outside here yeah. um and and the intention really is to to provide updates share the next generation technology that's being developed examples of where we use where this technology is being used some of the, the difficult stuff you know it's not easy yeah. to use some of this stuff um and share that in the in the sector and and, and act as a you know a really a focal point in the in the calendar in for anyone in the marine autonomous um sphere so it's quite specific to that um in terms of attendance we have a real mix uh you know people from the defense sector ocean science oceanographic yeah. sector offshore energy we have academia there it's, it's a really good cross-section um that that come together for that and um yeah we're really proud of it you know we've grown it to, to what it's like we don't want to change that core of no. technical conference slash yeah. trade show it's it's not a say you know it's not a sales platform no. for people but it's, it's a really it's nice a it's a showcase it, it's it? a showcase exactly yeah. and and there's a lot of exhibitors there as well and things like that so it's kind exactly. of showing off you know what the industry is doing not kind of just what we're doing and obviously Correct. the collaborations that happen Correct. the innovation center kind of are shown off it, there. It, exactly yeah it, it, exactly and we've we've always said with with that show that you know it, it's it's a show by industry for industry so yeah. yes it's ours you know it's run on our site but it, it it's developed each year by a, a committee made up of you know people who come right yeah. so we we try and make it relevant you it's not about us telling people about what we're yeah. up to it's it's really it's yeah. it's for for the people that come yeah. and for the members of the innovation yeah, and especially some of the heavily. some of the stuff i mean i've i've been to a couple but some of the stuff that's talked about i think i think once when i went there was like a live link from loch ness so there was yeah. the, the alr trials and things like that so it's yeah. you know really interesting and yeah that it obviously is a lot of variety in obviously it's marine autonomy is the focus but there's a lot of variety in yeah. how the different areas of that as well yeah exactly yeah exactly so the future so the future of the innovation center um yeah what what does that hold i mean in, in sort of five to ten years time how do you see the innovation center being what what position do you, do you feel it would be in yeah so i th i think you know if, if we look at some sort of different areas i guess in terms of physical space um that I, i'd like to think that needs to expand right. um just because membership will increase the demands on the, the the amount of space and the different uses of that space will will be different right. as the technology develops anyway so uh, there will be we we will have to grow the the physical space offering workshop testing equipment etc yeah. etc et so that that will that will evolve and that that will grow no doubt about that um i'm still i'm still not sure about the the hot desking remote i, I mean I, you know i'm not no one comment knows, on really that. No that, one knows yeah. right so whatever happens we'll cater yeah. for it i think it's the only thing i can say um uh, what i what i would say is there's there's some interesting bits around 
you know, do we do we supplement the core of the offering in terms of access to equipment, expertise, etc., with um, with with the wider sciences of NOC? Um, so not not move the focus away from marine autonomy, but kind of augment that to include, uh, I, I guess, you know, science, science that is directly linked to it or um, other areas of engineering that perhaps are starting to cross over. So, you know, autonomy in, in the sky, yeah. in that space, yeah, they're starting to get quite close. Yeah, so I suppose there's a lot of different marine autonomy isn't, you know, just the like we see now just exactly. the, the subs and things like that obviously there's a lot of different bits of science that, that go into that there there is and and you know the way that autonomous technology is 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 probably going to go is around integration of air autonomy um land autonomy yeah sea surface autonomy and subsurface uh, you know until now they've they kind of operate i in isolation that's not quite true but generally yeah that they will come together and it will all be interoperable and we'll need to cater for that in terms of what we offer in the innovation center so a byproduct of that will be i i, I really see the membership growing but it will grow by people who are not necessarily directly involved in autonomous technology in the in the ocean or subsurface ocean environment yeah. it will it will increase and to yeah. that land and to that air so that that's definitely um we we'd really like to expand the international reach um you know i think we're, we're based in the solent and we're a really important part of the, the 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 region's kind of superpower of of marine autonomous systems and and that's wonderful for the solent region it's wonderful for the south coast as well and it's wonderful for the uk but you know i i genuinely believe we're world leaders in this stuff and i'd love to really expand that international reach yeah. and that that has the effect of collaboration opportunities as well so it works it works both ways so that that's that's high on the agenda and then really some more of the kind of day-to-day -day stuff to allow the connections to be made between organizations more um kind of small events right. more webinars um we're getting a new website for knock innovation so yep. we're going to have a members area on there yep. which is fresh live so Gen general growth i guess is the summary but in in those specific areas is where i really see it taking off cool yeah no i think i think obviously the physical space helps to you know massively towards bringing everything together yeah. and and yeah i'm really looking forward to seeing sort of how it develops yeah but yeah thank you for joining me hugh for this part and part one no nope. um thank you if you'd like to learn more about the innovation center and the work knock does with marine autonomy visit the knock innovations website by clicking the link in the description if you're enjoying Into the Blue, make sure to subscribe on your favorite podcast app and follow us on social media to make sure you don't miss out on future episodes. We'll see you next time.